Hello, everybody. My name is Ryan Langkloss with ESRI. So I'd like to spend a little time this morning and talk about building the common operating picture for crisis management and how GIS can provide the geographic advantage when we do that. So let me start a little bit by defining kind of what I'm talking about when I say crisis management. Um, really, that's the charge that we all have to reduce vulnerability to hazards, both man-made and natural, uh, coping with emergencies when they do occur, right? Um, that's a very complex mission. We've seen a lot of examples today of how that's becoming increasingly more complex over the last several years. Uh, public expectations are extremely high, and of course in the global economy now with tight budgets and resources, building a common operating picture is essential to our response efforts. So what is a comprehensive common operating picture? Well, there's a couple of things that we like to include when we discuss that. So the first is situational awareness. So that is that it provides true awareness of what's occurring right now in a real-time environment, kind of near us and into the immediate future. The second thing is that it's dynamic. So I love the slide earlier that somebody put up with the PDF with the line through it, right? So while there's still a need for maps in the field, what we're trying to provide is a true environment's dynamic. It's being updated through web services and feeds that are coming in live from the field. That's the real key. The third part is the ability to add data from both internal and external business systems. So as we build a map and a crisis starts to unfold, there may be systems that have been invested in over, over the years previous to that, or that are coming online to support that. And if we can ingest those and bring those web feeds into our common operating picture, we can really start to deliver the power to the decision makers. We also want to be able to access information and plans that we've invested in. So I'm talking about buffer zone protection plans around infrastructure or an assessment that's been done around an event or a site. So if we can access those plans as well within that common operating picture, we are suddenly start to get a holistic view of the operation in real time. And then this, the last one here, I really like this, is the ability to provide true analytical capabilities to everybody. So a lot of people think of GIS as being that power user in the back of the room. Well, there's typically going to be that person, but GIS is evolving. And so we're actually trying to deliver those tools to everybody in a very easy to use, uncomplicated interface. That's really the key to a common operating picture. People will go to it, they accept it. It's the authoritative data source during a crisis. So really growing expectations have, have changed over the several uh, years, right? So consumer mapping applications online have really evolved where in the past GIS was kind of a one size meets all map on the web. That's really not the case anymore. Um, as a result of that, very rich interfaces are available. The user experience is greatly enhanced over where it used to be. And so GIS and maps are both evolving to meet that need. So I look at this and I see ability to put out much richer data sets, more robust analysis tools for everybody on a day-to-day -day basis. We're being more pervasive in the way that we deploy GIS around operations. And when we do that, we can be very creative in the cartography we deliver to make sure that we're telling the appropriate message and we're delivering tools on the need or as the need arises for everybody that's touching that operating picture. So how does GIS apply to crisis management? Well, there's a couple of things that we like to talk about in terms of solutions and patterns. So let's take a look at how it supports the crisis management lifecycle. That's how we prepare, we respond, we recover, and we mitigate. So the first one of those is probably the most core. We've heard a lot of talk today about data, and there's a lot of data that, that uh, we're inundated with during a crisis, both before, during, and after. And so if we can put a robust data management plan in place, we have access to store, to manage, to access that information on the fly when it's needed. We can manage our resources, so where are we tasking resources, where are other individuals working around the crisis, what's occurring in real time, right? We have access to those plans and documents that we've invested our time in and we really put a lot of thought behind. And then this is probably the, the biggest one here, so it's the planning and analysis side of it. So I can actually provide true robust geospatial analysis within a GIS. So I take advantage of all that data that we're migrating into, we're integrating, and I'm doing analysis on top of it to show those hot spots, show the trends, show the, the the upcoming modeling and consequences to any of the actions that we may take. And look for different mitigation priorities. I mean, that's really the key. The third is in situational awareness. So portraying that view out to everybody and all the operations that are in the field. So we want that common operating picture to be the central location for everybody to go to. It's a shared view across all operations and it has those analytical capabilities built into it. And then the last, we've seen a lot of this today as well, and it's really the edge is field operations. So how do we connect to those incident management teams or those feet on the ground that are seeing the situation unfold in real time? How do we get data transactions both from the field back to the operations center and from the decision makers back to those in the field that need to know? And that's really the key. Those are the four solutions that GS really support the uh, crisis management lifecycle. So when we do that and we apply all those four different solutions, 
we can begin to apply the geographic approach. And a lot of you probably do this and don't really realize it, but we have the ability to intake all that data to ingest the live feeds that are coming in, call in our uh, redundant data sources that we may have, find the appropriate authoritative data source, make decisions on that, turn that data into actual intelligence for the decision makers. They can review that actual intelligence, make a decision on it, ask more questions of the data, and when appropriate then, push that through the common operating picture so we have a coordinated action across that event. That's really the key. That's the, the three-step process for the geographic approach. So when we put all together, the geographic approach allows us to build a common operating picture that's comprehensive and provides situational awareness, gives us robust analytical capabilities for everybody. And in the end, that's the geographic advantage for GIS. So thank you very much.